morning. Good morning, everybody. How are we? We're good. Awesome. Well, I'm not going to talk too long, but I reckon we should. Um, I reckon we should stand to our feet. So excited to be in the house of God this morning, and we're going to worship God. We're going to praise God with all that we have. Amen. Because we've got uh, skipping our step. We've got beautiful air that we can breathe and we're going to pray and we're going to get straight into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you're an awesome God, that you're a faithful God, that you're a good God. And we just right now just declare, Lord God, that over this place there will be an, um, an open heaven. We pray right now, Lord Jesus, that we will join with your angels as we sing and glorify your name. And as we ask, Lord God, this morning, we open our hearts, Lord God. Let nothing distract us. Let nothing separate us from connecting with you in this place. And online, we, we right now, we just pray, Lord God, for those that are watching, that they're going to encounter God in a new way. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. All right, Woo! worship team, give it away.
and I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it, but still you gave yourself away. Holy, overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God.
you more ways higher than our ways and the plans that you have made are good and true and if you call us to the fire you will not withdraw your hand or gaze into the flames that look for you to the flames and look for you.
back in the in, in, amongst family um, been away for a little while um, everyone can just take their seats and uh, it's great to see you all here this morning we're going to continue our time God is in this house isn't he God is present here and as we uh, we're going to come around the table now and uh, for those that are online we just invite you to be part of this as well if you uh, go and get your biscuit or your bread and, and some juice and uh, just to enter in and, and take part uh, with us this morning. But as we uh, get our emblems this morning and we hold them, they represent what the Lord Jesus has done for us. Symbols that speak of his body broken 
uh, and, and of his shed blood. We're, we're reminded that this was God's plan to show the world his love, to show his love to his creation. And that plan of love was to send his son Jesus to pay the debt for my sin. He paid the debt so I could be brought into a place of right standing with God and become part of his family. It says in Ephesians, He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with his blood, or sorry, with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Paul the Apostle says we should be thankful because it is through what Jesus has done on the cross, the finished work of Christ, that we've been enabled or qualified to share in an inheritance, an inheritance that belongs to his people, to those who live in the light. It goes on to say, for he rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. You know, there was a tremendous cost involved for Jesus to pay the debt for my sin, to enable me to share in that inheritance that Christ gives, the inheritance of life. That freedom was brought about for us personally through the death and shed blood of Christ. You know, we've always been entitled to an inheritance. Before coming to know Christ and accepting him as our saviour, the inheritance that was ours was an empty inheritance that uh, was led to eternal death. The Romans says, you were dead because of your sinful nature. We had an inheritance of death because of our sinful, our sinful nature that was passed down from Adam and Eve. But God's plan was great for us. It was for Jesus, his son, to pay the debt for our sin and save us and free us from that in empty inheritance of death. When we receive Christ into our lives, uh, we receive uh, God into our lives and uh, our inheritance changed. It changed because God has made us alive in Christ and has forgiven us of our sin. He cancelled the record of char charges against us and took it away, nailing it to the cross. So as we take these emblems, we're reminded that there is power power in the cross power to cancel the empty inheritance of death <coughs> that was ours power under the new covenant to establish a new inheritance of life power to bring healing and wholeness to our lives Colossians says this includes you who were once far away from God you were his enemies, separated for him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. When God looks at you, he sees what Jesus has done. Does that mean that we're perfect? No. God is at work in our lives, uh, bringing about his purpose in our lives. But as far as our salvation is concerned, when God looks at us, he sees the cross. He sees the blood of Christ covering our sin and uh, the fact that we are, uh, are spotless in his sight for that reason because of the, the righteousness, the covering of Christ. So as, as we take the, the biscuit this morning, and then we can stand as we do this.
it speaks of the body of the Lord Jesus given for you. It speaks of a sacrifice of love. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Father, we just thank you for the fact that you loved us so much, that you loved your creation and your plan to, for the Lord Jesus to come was fulfilled. And that work that he was to do uh, when he was on the cross, he cried, it is finished. He finished the work to bring about my salvation. So as we stand here this morning and take this uh, biscuit representing the fact that Jesus was broken for me. Thank you, Father. And we take this cup. It represents a new covenant between God and his people. And God's covenant has always been about relationship. And God wants that relationship with his people. He wants that relationship with you. He wants that relationship with me. A covenant made possible and confirmed with his blood. So let's, as we take this this morning, celebrate the inheritance of life, a confident hope. And we now have this confident hope in Christ, eternal life. So thank you, Father, for the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were willing to uh, fulfill the Father's plan. You were willing to pay the, the cost of my salvation, to pay the debt for my sin. So I thank you for your blood shed this morning, represented in this juice, and as we partake of it, we are just so thankful to you, Lord Jesus, for who you are and what you have done for us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. If you can just pass your cups to the end of the row. We uh, welcome online, welcome those that are just come into the building. What a great time of worship. And um, yeah, it's my honor. My name is Faith and I just want to welcome you to Abundant Life. And we know that God is going to do, he's already doing something awesome, but he wants to do, continue to, um, yeah, just to do something on our hearts and leave this place not the same. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Well, I'm just going to quickly share a scripture around our time of giving. I just want to thank you, firstly, that um, for your generosity. You know, God is so faithful and we do. We thank you for what you do. And, um, you know, there's different ways to give online as well as now today, but also in the office. So just a reminder of that. But I'm reading from the Passion Translation. And I think this is quite, well, it's quite hilarious because the title of it in... Um, 2 Corinthians 9, it actually says, hilarious generosity. Point to the person beside you and say, hilarious generosity. Does anyone know? Oh, let me just rephrase this. Has somebody got, or do you, well, we all do, have someone in your family that is the hilarious one? Yeah? If that's you, you put your hand up. No. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> you know, you know they're the joker. They're the hilarious one that something serious is meant to be taking place and they're kind of the one that will give a jab and you go, listen, there's a time and place to be hilarious. No, no. It's always good. It lightens the atmosphere, doesn't it? It kind of like, but there are sometimes places where you go, okay, it's inappropriate to say that. No, but I think it's funny how in here it's actually called hilarious generosity. And in verse 6 of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says, Here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meagre harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Uh, let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Amen. So if you're that hilarious person in your family, it's okay. <laughs> we give you permission to be hilarious. No. Uh, verse 8 says, yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace 
so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Just as the scripture says about the one who trusts in him, because he has sown extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. And it can continue, continue. But, you know, I just want you to be encouraged, you know, being generous is something that it's not out of a ritual or religiousness. It's got to come from your heart. It's got to be something that God speaks personally to you when you come and bring your tithe. So there's not someone saying, oh, you know, you need to give this amount. I always um, encourage you to pray and seek God, you know, about what you should give. And, you know, God... He doesn't hold back. I'm not saying you've got to give to receive. But, you know, God is such a, uh, an awesome God that it should just come out of a flow of love. Amen? Why don't we pray? So if you do give, why don't you just hold that in your, your hand this morning? Or I know that if you do give electronically, I just want you to, by faith, hold that seed in your hand this morning. Father God, we just pray over the seed this morning, our offering, Lord God, that we bring to you, Lord. We know, Lord, that you are a generous God. And because you are generous, Lord, you have imparted that into your children. And right now, we want to make that a characteristic of our life, that we are generous in everything we do, with our time, with our love, with our um, acts of service, Lord God, and with our money. Lord, we thank you and we honor you in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, our ushers will collect that. And uh, we have a few notices I just want to quickly uh, remind you of. So next Sunday is our First Fruits offering. So say to the person beside you, First Fruits. You probably maybe never heard of that before. So it's awesome. Apostle Daryl is actually going to run an information or a bit of a... Um, Oh, just to give you some, uh, an understanding of what that actually means, if you want to know more about that, this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here at the church, uh, we're just going to run a little information on that because sometimes you, you know, hear this whole, what's first fruits offering? So it's good to actually understand where that comes from biblically and um, what that means. But if you don't come to that this Wednesday at 7, just be prepared Sunday coming, so next Sunday, that we are going to take that offering up our first fruits offering. Also coming up, which I think is pretty cool, is our 21-day fast. Oh, say to the person on your other side, I think you've been poking the person on your right. Now turn to the person on your left and say, I hope you're ready for our 21-day fast. That means no more coffee, Mr. Roscoe. <laughs> I'm, I'm amping myself up. I think I'm going to go no coffee, but no one will want to be around me especially my family. Um, I just love coffee. If you don't know me, um, if you want to give me a gift, give me coffee beans. No. Um, so that starts on Sunday, the 4th of February, and it goes for 21 days. It'll end on the 25th of February, that Sunday. So can I encourage you, like, just, um, yeah, like, maybe think about and meditate and pray, like, what is something that, you know, you really... Um, been struggling with, maybe there's something in your life you feel like it's cyclic. I seem to always come back to this. It's not a good thing. A positive, you know, like it's a negative thing. This is an awesome time to put all those things. And even if you're praying and believing, you know, the different things, this is a time when we press in corporately as a, as a church, but, in, but individually, you know, you're setting aside. And I heard a great teaching the other day about, you know, we think, oh, fast, all those things that we can't eat, you know, we can't, Sometimes you're not having like um, social media or different things you, you're cutting out, you're not doing. But think of it as this. You're actually preparing and you're making a time to feast with the Lord. So instead of thinking of it as a, oh, it's a fast, I can't have this, this and this. Think of it as an opportunity to have a banquet and a feast with the Lord. So that 21 days you're setting aside to really press in and have a feast with our Savior who created you. To find out maybe you're at a crossroad, you need to know what's my next step, what's the will of God in this area or that area, I encourage you to mark it in your diary because it is so significant and you will encounter God. If you are intentional, you will go a new level with your intimacy with God um, during that fast. So make it a big, go your calendars, I know everyone's in that stage of January, they're like, School starts now and you're writing all these things in your calendars. 
put down the fast. Amen? Put it in there. Cool. I know I spoke a bit too much on that, but I'm preparing you because it's good and we want to see breakthrough at that time. Uh, junior church, as you know, we're still on school holidays. Um, it doesn't start back up to the 4th of February, so that's in another two, um, two weeks, I think, maybe three weeks, two weeks, if I get my memory right. Um, yeah, so I know this is a little bit off, off script, but I want to pray for our teachers and our students um, in a minute, because we're all starting back at school tomorrow, um, so we're going to pray for them shortly. Um, but yeah, also our... Um, our beautiful um, junior church, church leaders have been having a nice break and holiday, so that's been good. And they're back into it. I want to encourage you too, if you have a heart for children or want to be able to serve, you know, we're always looking for helpers and volunteers. One more teacher. Come and see Mrs. Helen Shorten here. <laughs> but no, honestly, in area, any area, I've often, you know, we forget to say like, if you've got a, you want to have a heart to serve or passion, you know, come and see one of the, the leaders. Like that's in every, any area. You know, we do, we're always, you know, it's a family. And I don't know about you, when you're in a family, I would actually get a wrap over the knuckles. If we had dinner and we just stood up, left everything and walked away, just come back, you know what I mean? Like this is a family, we do things together. So, you know, everyone wants, you know, be a part of like preparing for, you know, preparing for that meal, preparing and then after cleaning up and doing that, you know, in home, you would be, that would be an expectation. I'm not saying it's an expectation, but it's something that is instilled in us as people to help serve and greater the family. Amen. Because it's fun. When you're on a team, it's fun. You make it fun. And if you're the hilarious one, well, man, watch out. You make it even, <laughs> even funner. Um, funner, is that a word? Cool. Don't correct me. It is a word. <laughs> funner. We're not at school yet. It's okay. No. Um, Australia Day prayer. So this Friday is Australia Day. And every year they have an awesome opportunity of coming together and praying. Like it's such a great day to come together. There's flyers out the back. It's up at um, the um, Hockey's Farm, which is in Miller Miller. And they have a wonderful time. They start in the morning. They do, you know, you're praying. But also, what about this? You have Billy T and Damper, and you also have a barbecue. Oh, my goodness. What else would draw you to go and pray? <laughs> no. But that's a, if you're interested in that this Friday, grab a flyer on Australia Day. That would be fantastic. Uh, also coming up is um, they're going to continue, which you would have heard last last year, the LL Ministries well, was such a great hit, like a lot of people uh, maybe in here have done it, did the last course. Well, they're actually going to, we're going to run that again this year. So if you're interested to do that LL Ministries, there's little booklets out the back to have a look at and see if you're interested in it. But we're also going to run a um, information night. So if you've got your diaries, write this down. The 31st of January, which is not this Wednesday night, but next Wednesday night at the church, 7 p.m. Cool? Too much information? I should have said, like, you should be riding on the person's shirt beside them or something. So that when they leave, they take their shirt off and they just pin it up on the wall and there's all the dates. We've got a fun, <laughs> we got a fun crowd. No, could that's a real youth thing. That's all good. Um, so LL Ministries, I encourage you to, if you are interested, to um, grab one of those and come along. Also, another thing, after church today, um, Gary, where's Gary? Give us a wave. He's going to talk about um, the Certificate for Ministry and Discipleship, which is run by Alpha Cruces, but we run it um, here at church. So if you're interested to know more about that, Please stay after church, hang around somewhere here, you know, once you've had your cup of tea and your bicky and stuff, come back and you can have a chat to Gary. He's going to do a little bit of an info sesh about that because that's cool to get to know God more and just to, um, as we talked about intimacy, it's a fantastic opportunity. Cool, cool. Well, I'm just going to quickly call up Mr. Um, Daniel Haynes, who is heading up our mission. So give it up for Dan. And he's going to talk a bit about mission, then our missions offering. Good morning, everyone. So this morning, I just want to sort of lay out 
what the missions are that we as a church support um, and our current commitment with them in 2024. So the first slide. <laughs> so Living Waters Village in Borneo. So there's a board that oversees the village and it consists of the three main people that are there. You may have heard of Pastor Ronnie. Yeah. So Pastor Ronnie and Kay Haybor. There, Ronnie is up in the top right, and he is like the father to all of the children that are there at the village. And then there's Pastor Toro, who's on the left of the top picture. There's Lodi, and he's down the bottom. And so Pastor Toro and Pastor Ronnie, they're pastors, obviously, over at Living Waters Village, and then Lodi came with his Dutch family to help out and serve in the village. He's a pastor as well, yes, yep. And so our commitment with Living Waters Village at the moment is $150 a month, and that is to support that ministry over there. And a little bit more information on who Living Waters Village is. So they are over 280 hectares of land in the jungles of Borneo. It's home to around 1,000 children and youth and schooling for around 2,000 children at both a primary and a high school level. They have a praise and worship center, a clinic, a hospital, an airstrip, and a Bible college and accommodation for the workers and teachers. And so that's a bit of a map of the village. The next mission that we support is ApostleNet International. So a bit of information on who they are. Apostle Chris Peterson and his wife, Carol, they saw the need for the church to transition from a pastoral model into an apost apostolic model. And so with that, they popularized it throughout Australia and India. And ApostleNet was born. Now, Apostle Chris Peterson he used to be a father to the church. He's now an apostle to the church. He used to come here three to four times a year. He's now fully involved with India. And we support ApostleNet with $150 a month. And through ApostleNet, we have connections to India. And there is Pastor Prasad. The next mission is Alpha Crucis College. And so as we heard just then, this afternoon after church, Gary's going to talk a little bit more about who Alpha Crucis is. But it's one of the first and largest Christian universities in Australia. And they have a vision to be a global Christian university. They have a purpose of equipping leaders for careers of influence in business, chaplaincy, counseling, entrepreneurship, teaching, ministry, music, and theology. And we support Afrocrucis with $50 a month. Our next mission is Gideon's International. You may know a bit about Gideon's in the previous times when they've come to our church. They are an association of Christian business and professional men dedicated to telling people about Jesus through associating together for service and sharing personal testimonies. And what they're most well known for is placing Bibles and New Testaments in strategic locations. These include hospital rooms, medical clinics, hotel rooms, and schools. And as a church, we support them by $25 a month. And that is for um, Bibles that they can place. And this brings us to our local missions within the community of the Tablelands. The Tablelands Christian Radio, 92.3 FM. Who here has heard of them before? 
awesome. So we support 92.3 FM with $100 a month to keep them on air and to allow their mission to be able to spread across Tablelands. And their vision is to connect communities across the Tablelands through radio content that upholds Christian values, is engaging, positive, family-friendly, and community orientated. And if you've ever listened to them, you know that's true. School chaplains. So we have many school chaplains in this region here. One of which is our very own Beck. So there's Sheree Romsley, and she is the chaplain of Machilwa, Chiligo, and Dembula schools. Wendy is the chaplain of Mount Malloy. Tim Gunton is the chaplain of Bybor, Walkerman, and Mariba Primary School. And Beck is the chaplain of Mariba State High. And our contribution to the school chaplaincy is $1,000 a year. And we do that that they can share amongst themselves as the chaplains in their ministry at the schools. Our next local mission is Hope Gathering. And as we know about Hope Gathering in the past, last year we've had four Hope Gatherings and each one was a great success. It involves the community. They all come in and it's a really impactful time to get God's word out into the Tablelands region. And each Hope Gathering, we put aside a minimum of $250 to allow that to happen from our church. And so just a summary of our current commitments of 2024 in missions. There's the Living Waters Village. There's ApostleNet. There's Alpha Crucis. There's Gideon's and the Tablelands Christian Radio. So those are our monthly supporters that we support. And then our annual support, we do support Mission Aviation Fellowship on their Father's Day fuel events. We, su we support them with $250 a year for that. And school chaplains, $1,000 a year. And our outreach events also include Hope Gathering, and Christmas in July. So we do that every year with a bacon and egg stall and a Sunday morning service out there. And then we have many once-off supports that we are able to do through our missions offerings. These include supporting the Herberton Church, our support for our church youth life, and to be, able to be a blessing to all those that come in and speak in our church. And so that's a list of who we support. And if the, yeah, if the um, ushers would like to come around and pick up the offering, that would be awesome. And I've got one more thing to mention as well. So we have some shirts. This is a shirt here. It's from Living Waters Village. There's a box there. There's about four to five of each size. They are a little bit smaller sizing. Um, so just be aware of that. And it'll be $15 um, for a shirt. All of that money goes to missions. And so, Father, I just want to bring these missions offerings into your, your hand right now, Lord. I thank you for the heart of our church to serve and to want to see an outreach in our community, but also in the wider world. Thank you that we are able to sow into that through our offering, but also through serving. And I pray that all of the, all the money that we're able to raise for missions be used for your work, Lord. So thank you. Amen. Amen. One, two, there we go. Thank you, Dan. Awesome. 
Yeah, how cool is that? It's good to know where, you know, we're reaching, you know, locally, but also, you know, the greater church, the greater um, greater world, which is fantastic, being the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, another announcement is life groups, because we've been on holidays, but our beautiful craft ladies are kicking it off this Wednesday. So at nine o'clock, they have it here at the church. So if you're interested um, to, in the community room down the back, so if you're interested uh, see one of the ladies um, come along. They have heaps of fun. But otherwise, all the rest are on holidays at the moment and we'll let you know once that all starts. Uh, we have got... Actually, sorry, we've got the... Um, Pastor David and Elizabeth, yours is kicking off this Wednesday too. And that's in the afternoon at 2.30 p.m. Two, 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 two. Here in this room. Awesome. How cool is that? There we, we are. We're kicking it off. Isn't that sweet? Well, school is starting. We're going to pray for those... Um, the kids in a minute, but we do have um, a few birthdays that we can pray for, and also next week is Team Four is serving. So a reminder, Team Four, that they're all into it next week. Um, the short <laughs> and uh, birthdays coming up. We've got Adrian's is coming up. Don't be shy, Adrian. On Thursday, we've got George's on Saturday down the back. And then we've also got Margaret's coming up on um, Saturday, and we've got a birthday coming up too. So we make sure that we, let us just, we'll quickly pray for these, um, get around these ones, we'll pray for those that are having a birthday. If you're having a birthday and we don't know, we'll join in on this prayer and also online. So let's just get around those couple of people and we'll pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for these mighty men and women, Father God, who are just so in love with you. And right now we pray as they um, take on another year, Lord Jesus, that you'll bless them, Lord God, that you will continue to pour out your, your favor, your anointing, Lord Jesus, over their lives. And let this year, 2024, be an outstanding, amazing year in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Uh, praise report. You know, we love hearing um, praise reports and prayer. You know, if you have prayer, please send it into the office or let us know because as a family, we want to pray. We want to celebrate with you. A big praise report is John down the back has been given perfect results from his last follow-up checkup. So give God a round of applause. That is so good. You know, he's had an uh, unknown thing happen and it's just been, you know, isn't God amazing? Like just to go back in and then the, all of the medicals go, medical team go, my gosh, like everything's perfect. Like what? You say, that's God. That's God. How cool is that? How cool? Um, and just a few prayer. We really want to pray for Mark John. That's Deb and George's son who's currently down in Cairns in the hospital waiting surgery. So we need to really pray for him today. Um, that he's going to have, yeah, medical team around him who are going to be, um, well, they are efficient and just God intervene there in that situation. Um, also want to pray for Michelle and the family, Michelle and Ross. Um, sadly, we heard of the passing of Michelle's dad. Um, but Michelle really wanted to say thank you to the church family for just getting around and praying and supporting them during this time. It's a really sad, hard time, but you know, we do, we really pray with, for their family and we're going to pray for you guys um, too. And also, um, sorry, Deb, I was going to say, we'll pray for Deb's neck too. She's got like real, we've, there's a lot of um, things going on at the moment. We know that God is moving and we know that he's a healing and working God. And we're going to pray for Deb's got a stiff, um, stress neck. We're going to really pray for that as well. Um, and another big thing is um, Johnny's niece, Mal, which is, um, she's down in Melbourne, if we can really uplift her in prayer. She's only 21 and she's been given a very, very crucial, sad, um, uh, terminal um, diagnosis. And they've kind of, the medical science have said, we can't do no more. So God is going to intervene. He's a miracle working God. And we are going to stand and believe that he is can do the impossible. Amen. So why don't we right now? Just if the person is beside you, if you can put your hands on the people that we're praying for, because God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. And I know there's many more who are going through things in their journey, and we, we don't know right now. If that is you, if you've got a part of your body that is, um, you know, an element 
body, mind, you know, spirit, put it on that, place your hand on that part of your body because God is going to do something in this place and he is going to transform lives. Father God, we just declare your word that by your stripes we are healed. And the names that we have just shared right now, Father God, for Mark, John, for Debbie, Lord God, for Michelle's family, for Mal, Father God, we lift them up to you in prayer right now. And we say, Lord of the heavens, Lord God, you hear our prayer prayer, Lord God. And right now you encamp your angels, Lord Jesus, around every single person, Lord. And right now you know that science may renege and say we don't know what to do, but you are a a solution, God. You are a miracle working God. And the impossible is what you work on, Father God. So right now we pray, let your healing from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet just infuse their bodies, Lord God, and let their right now just be a Oh, life-giving. Let everything just be life-giving, Lord Jesus, in their bodies, we pray. Oh, and those, the families around them, Lord God, give them peace, give them strength, give them hope, Lord God, and let there just be a testimony out of this test, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Awesome teachers and students. I know there's a lot of prayer and stuff like that. So if you are a student, why don't you stand? I want the students or a teacher. Can you stand for us, teacher, student? And we can, um, and yeah, teacher, student, stand to your feet. And we, if, you, if any of them are beside you, why don't you put your hands upon them? You know, there's power in laying on hands. That's it. So get around those people that are standing. If you see someone that's not standing, go stand beside them. Put your hand, lay your hand on them. That would be awesome. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Stand up if you're students. That's right. You go, go, stand, stand. Cool. Father God, we thank you for this new year of 2024. Lord, you know where the students have been placed. You know where the teachers have been placed, the schools that they're in, Lord God. And right now we just pray for an amazing year, a year, Lord God, of of just imparted wisdom, Lord God, a year of just your anointing to flow over their lives. Let them just to grow stronger in you, Lord, that it's not going to just be another year, but they're going to step into something new. They're going to step into something bigger, a revelation of you, Father God, but also surround them with good friends, surround them, Lord God, with good um, teachers and good colleagues, Lord God, that this will be an opportunity where they can share their faith boldly, Lord God, and that they will see, Lord, Lord, a harvest from them sowing and praying and, and, and just being a light where they are. So, Father, I thank you, bless them, and let them have a wonderful day tomorrow as they start school. In Jesus' name, amen. And I know Sandra's, there's been, we're going to pray for Sandra's, um, is it your, yourself, your family? You've got, oh, Sandra Hicks, your sister, sorry. Can we pray for her? Is that all right? We'll pray. So right now we lift up Sandra to you, Father God. We pray, Father, for um, just the situation that she's going through at the moment, Lord God. You know, you know the uh, the ins and the outs, Lord God, of, of every man, of every woman, Lord God. And right now we pray the situation that she's in, Father. Surround her, give her peace, give her um, oh, comfort and give her strength and healing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Awesome. Well, that's enough of me, but I think we should all stand to our feet, do a little bit of a stretch and a, and a wiggle, because Apostle daryl has got a word that he wants to, to share and bring, and it's so lovely to, um, to be here and to hear from that. So why don't we give him a big round of applause this morning. Morning, everyone. Please be seated. We serve a wonderful, powerful God, eh? all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful. We, uh, Trish and I had a, we're up in Herberton last week, had a wonderful time up there, but uh, I just want to give a quick report with Trish. Uh, as you, uh, most of you would have heard that uh, following the operation, they, uh, there was 0.01% of cancer in what they took out of a breast, which left absolutely nothing in a breast. Thank you, Lord. They, they took out 14 lymph nodes and uh, there was not one trace of cancer in their lymph nodes. God is good. We see the oncologist and the surgeon on Tuesday. They still want Trish to do radium and uh, 
and uh, we, we've uh, made a commitment. We started with chemo, so we'll continue on and finish what we're doing. So uh, Trisha's got a, probably another seven, eight months journey. Oh, she's starting to get hair back. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. I've saved so much money on haircuts. <laughs> Praise God. You know, we can have fun around and in the presence of God because the Word of God says there's joy forevermore. But sometimes we're in the midst of what we call trouble. The Lord says to rejoice. Apostle Paul says, and again I say rejoice. He said it twice so you get the message. That's pretty cool, I reckon. It's a bit hard to rejoice at times. If I can just do one little, um, uh, ask you to do me a favour. From now on, could you keep the, the toilet doors open, uh, closed? On the toilet door it says whether it's male or female. If you don't keep them closed, people who are new can walk in anywhere. So please do that and it's also good even if I have to walk down to the storeroom, I don't have to look in the ladies, okay? So it would be good if you start to do that. We haven't been doing it and uh, I, uh, I just want to address that. We had an issue last week where a lady went into the men's uh, toilets and so we need to, we, need, we don't want that happening. Amen? Well, Pastor Dave has a word for us uh, concerning the cyclone. So I'm going to bring the mic to him and, and he can share with you. Praise the Lord. The Lord impressed on me because I always like to share something about you can have authority, you know. You are a believer, you have the authority, okay. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me and he's given to us now. He's not going to do anything else. He is living to us to do it. So we have the authority. We can declare. At the moment, every time you turn on TV, you can hear the, 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 the news about, oh, the, uh, the low pressure is coming. It's going to change into a cyclone. We don't have to agree with that. Okay? We, we don't have to agree with that. We can declare according to Mark eleven twenty three. Okay? It says, you say to the mountain, cast into the sea, and not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say, you can have what you say. So we're going to say to the low pressure, low system in the coral sea, that cast them in the sea. So they're going to cast them in the sea and, and reduce, re release all the water into the ocean and not to become a cyclone. We declare that this morning? Okay, and you can declare it every day. When you go up in the morning, you declare it and you can speak because... I don't want to see any more destruction like the, like the last cyclone up here, okay? We don't want to see any more destruction on the coast of Queensland. So we can agree with that now? Okay, I'll just pray a short prayer. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. You have given us the keys of the kingdom, that we have power over everything we can speak. We can speak to the mountain. We can speak to the sea. We can speak to everything. And it's this, at the moment at Coral Sea, this two thing is the mountain. We're going to speak to it right now and we cast it into the sea and let it, let it all rain down into the, the, the sea and not to, not to reform any, any cyclone at all. We, we stop that in Jesus' name. So we declare that in the name of Jesus and we believe it and we receive it and we continue to say it and we can have what we say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I keep declaring that this is a year of alignment and I'm going to speak a little bit more about alignment this morning. It's interesting, uh, uh, Ross was telling me he's driving his Mercedes, I oh know his Volkswagen, and uh, he hit, hit a hole or hit something and busted his tyre and uh, wrecked the tyre. The thing is, for you and I in life, we can have a few shipwrecks. Doesn't matter who we are, you know, we're, we're, Trish and I have been tested this year, and I dare say, you, or last year, I dare say you've been tested. 
we believe we've come through our valley of Barker and we believe we just we may have another valley to go into we, we're not too sure but we do know less our strength is in the Lord our heart is set on pilgrimage and even if we go through the valley of Barker we'll make it a spring but in this journey for for Ross it he would have a brand new tire on. Now, he would have been unwise, and I haven't asked him if he didn't get a wheel alignment because I know this, when you get something so bad on your vehicle, there's a fair chance your alignment goes out. And if he didn't, he needs to. He's got it because if, if it didn't, he'd, he'd have a tire needing replace in 12 months. But you know, for our lives, sometimes we just need to look at it and just say, Lord, I need your help to realign here. I've just got a little bit of out of alignment. You're, you're convicting me. Aren't you glad God doesn't condemn us, but the Spirit of God convicts us and loves us so much He doesn't want to leave us the way we are. And, and so with this today, I want you to just... Uh, to trust God, uh, and if you feel you need alignment in, the, in an area, just say, Lord, I'm trusting you to do this in my life this year. Sometimes we're, we're, we live in this microwave world where we, we believe for instant, and God can do the instant, but I, I in my life, probably 90% or more of the time, that God has been showing me to bring change, it's been slow. And when God does a slow work, it's a strong work and it'll never be changed again. When God does something strong in your life, nothing can mess that. So I'm going to pray and we're going to see what the Holy Spirit does this morning. Amen? I tell you what, I'm having fun this one. This is a great service. Great worship, guys. Great time around the table, Phil. And as for Pastor Faith, you can't help but have fun. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for your presence here. Whether they're watching online or, or in this place or over in the, in the chapel, we, we just thank you, oh God. Your presence is with us and upon us. And you are a God who speaks. And you are a God who transforms lives. You are a God that heals and delivers and, and, and causes us to think differently the way we were. We declare we are a kingdom people. And we ask this morning, Lord, pour out upon us the spirit of understanding that we would leave here with a clarity in our heart and, and, a, and a fresh passion in a, in, it would deep within us to want to live a life pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. If you haven't listened to the first sermon, it's on the 30, last day of 23. I said you, you and I need to to, to in this year of alignment, check out our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Have we got a strong devotional life? Because there's great joy for each of us that through Christ, through the blood of Christ, we have access to the Father as a son. We're no longer orphans. I, I, I love being a son, and, and I, I know you do too. But I know there comes responsibility with sonship. As a son to a loving father, I, I need to carry responsibility. I can't stay a baby all my life. Amen. And so we seek first the kingdom of God. We put God first. The second place to align is in your relationships. If you've gone through life and never had a relationship problem, you must have been dead. Because every one of us has relationship problems. Even when my wife beats me in skipbo, I don't like losing. 
But the other side of things, some relationship breakdowns are fairly big. But we, we, God's asking us to align our relationships. Maybe you have chosen to forgive, but you've got to walk that out. And the joy knowing that if God says this is a year of alignment, he'll enable you to align. His power is there for you. Philippians 2 says this, verse 3, that nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind that each esteem others better than himself. That's the vision for us as a church, living abundantly for others and knowing that kingdom is all about relationships. Hallelujah. The third area that I talked about the first Sunday was aligning your life with the call of God. The call of God. Every one of us has been, been put uh, by the Spirit of God a call within your life. It's not your call really. It belongs to Jesus. But it's living the way he wants you to live in the area of ministry. We're all called to be ambassadors for Christ. That's mean represent the kingdom of God well. We're all called into a ministry of reconciliation. But we also all have a calling on life to bring the kingdom into other people's lives. And the Word of God says, according to the way Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come. Why? Why? So the will of God can be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so there was the three areas we, we began in. And then the second week we looked at sonship. The spirit of sonship, I, I believe, each of us must align with that. I believe it can make such a difference in your journey of faith. Understanding sonship. Spirit of sonship. And so we're going to move on and, and, and look at a few, three other areas. And, and the first area I want you and I to check is our... Uh, is our life aligned to a life of discipleship? In Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus said this to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In other words, a disciple is one who follows Christ and leads others to do the same. But a disciple is one who follows Jesus, is being changed by Jesus into his likeness, but is committed to the mission of Jesus. Paul said this, Apostle Paul, I die daily. He's speaking to the Galatian church. He said, it's no longer I that liveth. Who lives within every believer? Christ. We all know that Jesus is either on the throne or you are, even though you're giving your life to Christ. It's a challenge to be a disciple. When Nicodemus came to Jesus and and Jesus told him he must be born again to see the kingdom, when you give your life to Christ and you are born again in the Spirit of God, you see the kingdom of God. It's your responsibility to enter into the kingdom, to to allow the Spirit of God to change your life that you no longer live like the world, but you live as Christ has set the pattern for you to live. In Luke 14, verse 25 to 33, it says, Great multitudes went with him. So you can imagine here's Jesus uh, and all these people around him. And he turned to them and he messed their lives up. Jesus did this really well and he messes our lives up all the time when we realize, wow, I need to align that in my life. But he says this 
If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and his children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That's quite challenging, isn't it? But it's to, to understand that he's saying in comparison to your love and dedication, your devotedness to the King of Kings, in comparison. Because if you are a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know you'll love your wife, you'll love your children, you love your father and mother. But he's trying to let you see how much commitment and devotion he's looking for from every believer. Revelation 12, 11 says, they overcome him, that's the devil, how by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony, declaring not only the what the Lord's done in their own lives, but declaring the power of the blood of Christ. But it also says, and they did not love their lives even unto death. This is speaking about sons and daughters of the Most Holy God who are totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. I was speaking to a, a, a pastor on, um, on Monday we had lunch with. And he said, I was really angry with you that you actually left your wife home and went to Borneo. But see, my wife and I, we don't serve one another. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the Lord says go, we, 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 we go. What a great song that was this morning, Gary. I want you to sing that, please, at the end of this. Finish this up. But the Word of God says your life and my life is not our own. We belong to another and his name is Jesus. So if you're a true disciple of Christ, you'll put Jesus first and love upon your family. And we've seen this at the very beginning. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. There's order in the kingdom. There's order in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything else becomes an idolatry. You know, um, I went down to LL Ministries in with the group of us, I think 10, 11, and um, I got ministry too. And I said, I just feel that the Lord's not happy with me in, in an area. And that you, you could go, you know, that's pretty wide telling a group of three people ministering to you, that's how you're feeling. And as they begin to pray and minister into my life, it was all about India. See, the, the Lord had said, sorry, the Lord didn't say anything or I didn't ask him. But I got invited to go to India last year and I didn't want to go. But just in case the Lord said yes, I didn't ask him. And you can laugh, but I, I don't like traveling. I don't like being away from family. I love being home. You can have every airport and every airplane you like. And then I go in the, I get to the place and I'm in full blade spiritual warfare. It's nice being home. So I had to repent. Because without realizing, I had moved, got, got away from being Lord of my life in that area and I'd taken my place on the throne. It's called idolatry. Of course, none of you would do what I did. 
But we know that we're all growing in God. Amen. We're, we're being transformed from one degree of glory to, to the other. And sometimes we do wrestle God for longer than we should. And we justify our wrestling. We, 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 anyway, I don't have to say any more. If you're being convicted, you know. In John 8, verse 31 to 32, Jesus said this to the Jews who believed in him. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You can't separate the word of God from the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But there's a treasure in abiding in the Word of God. And this is why the Lord said to Joshua, when he was being commissioned to take Israel into the Promised Land, in verse 8 of 1 Joshua, it says this, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is in it. Then you will be, a, be prosperous or you, the translation New King James says make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. See, a lot of us want to be prosperous in all ways and, and have good success, but we forget the importance of the Word of God. I encourage you today, if you've given your life to Christ, you've stepped into an opportunity to become a disciple. And Jesus asks us and says, if, you be my disciple. He gives you the choice. Some people get into heaven just hanging on by the skin of their teeth. They've given their life to Christ. They're saved, but never ever become a disciple. Some have never been taught. Some have never heard this more. That happened to the believers in Ephesus. And apostles Paul said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, we haven't even heard about the Holy Spirit. So it's like that for some believers. But I, you're hearing this today. And Jesus says, if you be my disciple. So I leave that with you. Maybe you need to check your alignment and make a decision to allow the Holy Spirit to align you. Remembering always it's a journey. I forget at times I got saved back in 1985. Some of you weren't even born. What a joy it is to give your life to Christ. The second area is align your life to a life of prayer. In Luke 18, verse 1 to 8, it says, Then he spoke a parable to them. This is Jesus spoke. That men always ought to pray and not lose heart. I think sometimes we read that as we should pray sometimes and, 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 and get strong again to pray more. But the Lord's saying we are to pray always. And then he goes on to say there was a certain, in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. He's an ungodly guy. But after he said within himself, Lo, I do not fear God nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest her... By her continual coming, she would weary me. Then the Lord said, and you need to hear this this morning, 
because we all need encouragement with prayer. He said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect, that's you and I, who cry out day and night to him, lo, he bears long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really, when he comes and he is coming back, will he find you being a praying person or a sleeping person? Will he find you sitting in front of the tennis with Pastor Darrell? <laughs> it's time, Trisha, I just turn it off and say, we, we, just, we just need to turn it off. I love tennis. Prayer is so important. Paul writing to the Thessalonians, I think it was the first Thessalonians. Rejoice always, you got it right. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. When you're traveling, before we go, if we're going to cans or or, or or around the table in the morning as we're praying and declaring things, moan the Lord, I'll pray. Why? Because there's power in prayer, and prayer is just speaking as a friend to a friend with God. Paul writing to his Son of faith, Timothy, says, I desire therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. I know this is different types of prayer, and we're not going to look at this today. But, but I, I, even while we're praying, I felt God drop something in my heart, a word for someone here in the, this, this morning. And that's to do with Hannah. Hannah used to go out with her husband and, and, and with, with, the, with, with the whole family to the temple to worship God once a year, to bring up the gifts and everything else they had. But she used to tell her husband about all her problems. And she had complained to him that she couldn't have, she was childless. But when she turned her request to God, one year she went up absolutely broken before God, guess what? She got the answer. You can break your heart towards to people and it's, and it's healthy to share your, your journey of pain at times. But I tell you what, man can do nothing for you. Learn the break before the Lord. I've seen great breakthroughs through just the Spirit of God come upon and just weeping and sobbing before God. If you've never done it in prayer yet, there's something wrong. You need to press in and allow God to break your heart over things. Because if you can't do it through your, because of your own plight, how can you do it for your community? How can you do it for your brethren? Because that attracts the Spirit of God. If you can... Break before God. Because what happens, you're feeling not your own pain. You're feeling the pain of your heavenly Father because He wants the best for your life. He wants the best for the community. And for those we're praying for this morning, He wants them healed. Amen. It ain't the will of God for people to die young. That ain't His will. It's personal prayer and corporate prayer. Both are important. Have you ever attended a prayer meeting? I learned to pray attending prayer meetings. Said nothing. Just went and prayed in tongues and went home. Never ever prayed, but I learned to pray through that. Jesus said this, When you fast, do not look with a sad countenance like the hypocrites. But he says, When you fast, put, on, put oil on your head and wash your face. See, not only does... Jesus expects you and all to pray, expects you to fast and pray. Yeah. 
Phil and Janet are taking over the prayer ministry, which is fantastic. I believe we'll see it go to a whole new height, depth, you name it. But if you're interested in corporate prayer, and you should be, they pray here on Wednesdays, 9 to 11. And if you're real good, you'll get a cup of tea. There's also prayer on Friday mornings on Zoom. But there's a pre-service prayer meeting that a lot of people don't know about. That's open to everybody. When I was over in Kalamatan there, there was children, ages five years of age, all the way through, minimum 100 people. Of course, there's over 1,000 in a congregation. But it just showed the heart to pray. I encourage you. It's in the chapel and Phil's going to tell us what's going to happen that in the future. But from quarter to nine onwards, come and join us before the meeting. Or come and just sit in here listening. The guys are rehearsing for the morning. Just sit in the seat and just lift up your heart to God. But the big prayer meeting for us is our 21 day fast and praying which will take place starting on the 5th of February and if you've never fasted before you need to research that but I'd encourage you if you've never fasted or even if you have a Daniel fast is something you can do 21 days without any issue it's not hard at all because you eat veggies you eat fruit Unless you're Italian and you like pasta, you've got to give up on that. <laughs> give up on meat. I want to so encourage you in this whole area of prayer. Daniel fast is, is amazing when you look at the fruit of Daniel praying for 21 days. It's not about the fasting, it's actually about the praying. A corporate prayer. Beloved, I'm looking forward. I said to the team here, last year, for some reason, the other pastors didn't want to gather together to pray. This year, I said, we're just going to make it happen. We're just going to come. Invite others. But I'm, not, I'm giving you an invitation tonight when it happens. We're going to look at it once a month. I believe every one of us should be in a prayer meeting. The third one is align your, your life to a life of generosity. Psalm 84 is a, I love that psalm. But verse 11 says this, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing. Jesus' teaching says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in. He finishes this little message by saying, For where your treasure is, that your heart is, will be also. I know this in the journey of most people that are growing in, in, in their discipleship as a, as a disciple. The last part of our lives to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ is normally our money. My youngest son was four years of age and granddad put a new roof on. And he said to granddad, he said, granddad, you need to thank God for that new roof. And he said, why should I? He said, uh, I, I paid for it. I worked hard for that. He said, yeah, but God gave you the job. And granddad came up with something. He was only four. 
Brenda came, he, he just couldn't win over his four-year-old grandson. But you and I can carry the same attitude as a believer. And I want to encourage you this morning to align your finances. To align it. It's interesting that faith, the scriptures she brought concerning giving this morning, hilariously giving? I'm like that at times, especially when I'm somewhere and I, I, I bet that's all the cash I've got in my wallet. And I just laugh and give it. Why? Because the Lord's my provider and he's yours. If the Lord asks you to give, you give. But it's a learning thing to walk in that. We had to learn to tithe. We've been tithing probably now for 40 plus years. And at times I've been challenged by my own thinking with that. And I thank God I never listened to my thinking and stuck with the Word of God. There's a time that reaping comes. But you, you don't tithe to get. You tithe so that your finances is blessed, protected by the Lord Jesus Christ. Tithing is all about the Lordship of Christ. So don't tell me Jesus is fully Lord of your life if you don't tithe. And I just want to encourage you in that because for all of us it's a learning thing but the question I have for us all is the Lord Lord of your finances we look at missions and a lot of times didn't Daniel do a great job this morning See, a lot of times we get to a day of missions on the Mission Sunday and we forget, we've got nothing in our pocket. Think, oh, man, I'll put it in later. We never do. The following month, it's on again. We forget again. We could go three, four months and not give to any mission. Now, I know that by experience. So what my wife and I did, we, we said what we're going to give every week. So we, we put that in because I believe... For a true disciple of Jesus Christ, missions has to be your heart. It's the third Sunday. This is the third Sunday. And so I want to encourage you, even with missions, what it, what are you going to give weekly or, or monthly to that? Because I know there's a lot more you and I could do. Give an example, this church, when we do Hope Gathering, we give $250 to, a, to help that happen. But it's only a help. It'll cost that, this church anywhere between $500,000 and $1,000 more uh, than that. Why? Because we want it to be done well. There's some of you that just have given into that so we can do it well. I, I want the church seen as, as something special and not something that's, that, that's weak and, and looking like we have a poverty problem. Amen? But plan your year in your giving to missions. This coming Sunday is first fruits. If you don't know about it, that's fine. First of all, it's just something you get to do. It's not something you have to. It's not like tithing. Apostle John Alley, he, he, was, he was convicted over it and, and he couldn't get his... Because it, it can be thought or brought back into law a bit. But if you're interested, Wednesday night I can show you all through the New Testament first fruits. But the, what he did, he thought, well, I'm going to just give out, I'm just going to bless the Lord. And he started to do that with his first fruits. And he said, from that day on, he's never had one problem to finance. Interesting. God has 
Hawaii is teaching us his ways. This is a year of alignment. What do you need to align today? Because I know God's grace is there for you and for me. Amen, those watching online. I'm going to ask the team to come and, and sing that song, if you would, Gary. I was so convicted with that. I will go. You know, there's those songs that come, you, you, you really love it, but you wonder if you really love it because it's so convicting. But I, I want to pray for us today. But I, if you like prayer, sorry. If you like prayer, just come because we'll have a team to pray for you. I just want to, I just sense that God just wants to bless people today. And if you feel that, just come. We're not going to take time. I'll just lay hands and release the anointing. If you feel that, as we sing, just come. We'll just, the team will pray for you. But please stand with me right now because I want to declare fresh over us that this is a year of alignment. You know, Pastor Faith preached on Psalm 34 last week. That's one of the Psalms I learned all the way through. If I'm ever locked somewhere, I'll be able to speak Psalm 34. But taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, as you align your life, that's what you're doing. You know, I've, I've, eating and, and drinking of Christ is what it's all about. There's so much more to eat of Him and drink of Him. So if you feel comfortable, just lift your hands right now. Father, together we declare that this is a year of alignment. And Holy Spirit, you never condemn us. You just convict us and lead us into all truth. That is the joy of walking with you, Holy Spirit. And so I just release a fresh anointing upon each of us. Those watching online, those in the chapel, those here. Let a fresh anointing and enabling an action be upon our life. Because, Father, if you put that on my heart for this house, a year of alignment, you grant us the power to align. I just release that anointing over us this morning. In Jesus' name, receive it, beloved. Receive it upon your lives. Receive it upon your workplaces, upon all that you're involved with. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Let's sing this song. And if you like prayer, just come. say go we will go if you say wait we will wait if you say step out on the waters and they say it can't be done we'll fix our eyes on you and we
God, we just seal, Lord God, the word that was spoken today. And Father, right now, we just thank you as we go from this place that you will continue, Holy Spirit, to speak to each and every one of us. And Lord, we just pray right now that if there were things that we need to bring into alignment, Lord, that you will illuminate them so that we can deal with them. In Jesus' name, I pray right now that your favor, your blessing will be upon your people, Lord God, your children. May your face shine upon them, Lord God, and may they have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we'll continue to minister, but you can go outside and grab a cup of tea or coffee and continue to have some time of fellowship, but it's never too late. Sorry, the tea and coffee is over here. I forgot to say. If you want to grab it, and it's not raining, so you can take it outside, but we'll continue to minister here, um, yeah, and continue to um, pray if you need prayer. Uh, we were just going to quickly pray for, to remind, a reminder that Michelle um, Haynes, who shared last week her new job, so we pray right now for Michelle. She'll be watching online, probably, that she has <laughs> later. Bless her this week in her new job. We thank her for all of her, um, oh, her gifts and talents in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So if you think about Michelle, pray for her in the new role. But be blessed. Um, continue to send in your prayer, um, prayer and praise report, um, reports. And Daniel will be there if you want to buy one of those shirts for missions. It goes towards missions. So see Dan if you want to see more about that. But see you online. Have a fantastic week, family, and be blessed. Be blessed. When I go where you go, and want to do what you do, and we wait for you.
that you have made a good